North Melbourne and the Wooden Spooners from the 1970 season caused an early upset by defeating reigning Premier Carlton in their first round clash of the 1971 season. Slamming Sam Kekovic starred, but a week later he was in the bad books after being suspended for two weeks after this collision with St Kilda's Barry Breen. The start of the 1971 season also saw one of the VFL's most talked about swaps. The Saints let dual Brownlow medalist Ian Stewart go to Richmond in return for Billy Barrett. Another North player was in the news in the early part of the 71 season. His name, Keith Gregg, and he burst into the Victorian team after just eight senior games. Melbourne also signed a big-name player, but Diamond Jim Tilbrook was an expensive buy for Melbourne, who shelled out $39,000 for the South Australian. There were plenty of fireworks through the season, and the television cameras didn't miss many of them. One which caused particular uproar was the collision between Victoria's Lee Matthews and West Australian idol Barry Cable during the state match in Perth. At the end of the home and away series, three of football's biggest names decided to retire. Ron Barassi left Carlton, Bob Rose called it quits after a heartbreaking period with the Magpies, and Norm Smith retired from his coaching role at South Melbourne after a career which spanned four decades, highlighted by the halcyon days at Melbourne, in which he was part of nine premierships. The 1971 Grand Final was contested between Hawthorne and St Kilda, and a lot of interest centred on whether the Hawks' goal-kicking machine, Peter Hudson, could break Bob Pratt's record of 150 goals. Hudson needed four to break the record, which had stood since 1934. In one of the most fiercely contested Grand Finals in history, Hudson had his chances, but managed only three goals, and Pratt's feat was now shared. Hawthorne produced a magical final term to kick seven goals to three, and the Hawks, mainly through Bob Keddy, who kicked four of them, won its second ever flag. But Hawthorne's dominance took a nosedive in the opening round of the 72 season, when Hudson, who had booted eight of his team's nine goals just before half-time, collided with Melbourne's Barry Burke, and the brilliant Tasmanian missed the following 22 months. 1972 saw the introduction of the Final Five system, and, for the first time, finals matches were played at VFL Park. The elimination final was between St Kilda and Essendon, and it was the Saints who came out on top. In the second semi-final, in which Richmond and Carlton clashed, we had a draw, only the fifth time in a finals match. A dark side to the exciting match was the attack on field umpire Ian Coates as he walked from the field. In the replay, the Tigers charged into the grand final with a 41-point win, and after the Blues narrowly beat St Kilda, they met Richmond in the grand final, the third time they'd met within a month. This time, it was the Blues' turn, and in a hard-fought match, Carlton kicked the highest score ever in a grand final, while the Tigers' losing tally of 22 goals 18 would have won any previous grand final. But if Carlton thought the grand final was tough, it was nothing compared to the Australian team championship in Adelaide a week later, when big bad Mal Brown went on a one-man demolition exercise on the Blues. A few years later, Brown moved to Victoria, 